great high priest, making intercession for us with the Father. Lord Jesus, we see you high, we see you lifted up, clothed with all power, with all dominion, authority, clothed in majesty. Father, this morning we thank you for the blood of Jesus, because it's purely by the blood of Jesus that we, O oh Lord God, have been washed, have been cleansed, O oh Lord God, and have been made right with you. And this morning, O oh God, we stand not in our own righteousness, but the righteousness which comes by faith in the works of the cross of Jesus Christ. So, Father, this morning, we lift our holy hands to you and we worship you. We give you thanks and praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you worship, O oh God. Father, we thank you this morning for your precious word. Your word, O oh Lord God, O oh Lord, gives us direction. Your word gives us faith. Your word builds us up. Your word causes us, O oh God, to see things in a new and a living way, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, and through, O oh Lord God, the word of God, we have intimacy and fellowship with you. We, O oh Lord God, see Jesus Christ, the Son of God, revealed unto us. So, Father, we thank you so much for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you this morning, O oh Lord, and even, Lord God, when we have an opportunity to open the Word of God, it's an opportunity for us to be changed, to be transformed, to be renewed, O oh God, to the same image of God. As the Word declares, O oh God, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, a glory which never fades, O oh God. So we thank you this morning, O oh Lord, that Lord we look into the perfect law of liberty this morning. For it was for freedom that Christ Jesus, your Son, has set us free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So Father, I decree freedom in the house this morning. I decree freedom in the lives of your people this morning. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Lebro shala la mande brama kia le amo le masu. Reba makia kere le mando robo shala. Reba makia se kare ma ro shala la mo. Le 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 masu la baba shala la baba le ma. Robo shi anda kare mando robo shala ha. O raba kia se de robo shi anda kaza ha. We thank you, Lord of God. We bless you. We praise you. Lift up the name of Jesus in this place. We declare the Lordship of Christ Jesus in our lives, in our homes. Oh God, we thank you this morning. In our city, Jesus is Lord. In our, in our province, Jesus is Lord. In our country, Jesus is Lord. In our continent, Jesus is Lord. In this world, Jesus is Lord. So we thank you, Lord, oh God. Oh, we thank you for the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In your precious name, oh Lord God, we pray. Father, I pray this morning that you anoint, Lord God, our vocal cords. Anoint my voice, oh God, to declare your word to your people. In Jesus' blessed name, Father, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you, we praise you, and we exalt you, oh God. In Jesus' blessed name, and all the church of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Amen. Cold didn't keep you 
you at home. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, this morning, I just want to share a word with you, and I think it's the beginning of, well, the month of October, and a word of encouragement I want to give you, and I think last week I began, I began the message on God wanting you to possess the land. I believe in my heart that that is the word that God releases to you for this month, is possess the land. Possess the land. Take ownership of the land. Amen. And I shared with you last week, we looked at um, how God spoke through Moses to the nation of Israel and how God spoke of the land that he was leading them to. And I shared with you that land is Canaan. Another thing I shared with you was that that land, Canaan, represents God's best. Now, you see, um, many times in our lives, we kind of have the mentality or the thinking that God has still got to do stuff for us. Let me tell you this morning, and I'll share with you, you'll see it this morning, your life already has been predestined. Your life is predestined. Your life is preordained. That means God, listen, before you were even born, before you were even conceived in your mother's womb, God knew you and God knew everything there is to know about you. And God already planned your destiny. Before you even came to this earth, God already, He preordained, predestined, destined, your destiny. And once God has preordained something or predestined, it means, man, you are destined for that. It was done. Your destiny predates your conception. So it's predestined. And God has predestined each one of us, each and every one of us, to be conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. You're not supposed to conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are supposed to take on the image of Jesus, the image of Christ. That's what God predestined your life to be. And if God has already preordained your destiny, nobody can stand in the way of you reaching your destiny, not even the devil. The devil has got no power. No, come on somebody, I think I'm in the wrong place. I said the devil has got no power. Stop giving the devil glory for things he doesn't have. He doesn't have power. He doesn't have authority. It all belongs to Jesus, and Jesus has given it to the church. He's given it to you and I. So there's nothing, there's nothing that can stand in the way of you reaching your destiny except you. There's nothing. There, listen, in the very same way, there's nothing that can stop your access and entry into heaven except you. Except you. See, making heaven your home. You're the only one that can stop it. But the choices you make. And your choices come as, as a result of your mentality, your, your thoughts, your thinking. Say amen to that. So nothing can stop you from reaching your destiny. When you look in the book of Deuteronomy, let's go there quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jesus. Deuteronomy 6 verse 10, I read it to you last week. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land. 
You see, if you've been brought into something, it means there's no effort on your part. Come on, somebody. When the Lord your God, watch this, the Lord your God brings you into the land. This is what God does. This is you. This is you, right? And this is what Moses is saying. What God is saying, he says, So it shall be when the Lord your God, you are here, but you need to be here. The Lord your God brings you into the land. You see, that is an operation of God's grace. Grace was always there from the very beginning. When God created man, grace was in operation. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is divine influence. And we find in Genesis when God created man, before he even created man, he created everything. Before he created man, he created everything that man would need. All that man had to do was to have fellowship with God. You with me? God created everything. The Bible says God created all things, created everything. And then finally, after God had seen all that He had made, and it was good, then God said, Let us, let us, speaking to Himself. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So God created man from the dust of the ground, the dust of the earth. And God breathed, ruach, the breath of God, God breathed life into man. And man became a living being. And then God took man whom he had created from the ground and placed him in the garden. God had created everything for man already. Then he creates man. And then he places him in the garden. It's the same thing that God was saying here to the nation of Israel, it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he spake unto thy fathers. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, to give you, to give you, what is this? He puts you in the land and now he gives you. To give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. You got that? Here's the thing. God, I said to you, your destiny was preordained. And it is there. And now God takes you. And he bring, you are already in the land. You see, for as long as you consider yourself to be out and on your way to, you're never really going to see that God is at will. That's why you find many people are ungrateful. Many people are unthankful. Come on, somebody. Where you are now is God's best for you. That is your Canaan. The job you have now, that is your Canaan. Thank God for it. 
Listen, because before you got the job, you never had it. But now you have the job. Well, now you have the business. You are not waiting for something that God still has to make. God has already created it. Your destiny has already been created. It has already been finished. Oh, Jesus. You see, when God speaks to you, He gives you a vision. And it's so important for them. You see, the problem with people is that they don't focus on the vision and keep the eye on the vision. They keep their eyes on the pro of the vision. Because they think they are the professionals to get the provision for the accomplishment or fulfillment of the vision. Are you getting what I'm saying here? That's the problem that the spies had, the ten spies. Moses sent twelve spies into the land. We saw that in Numbers 13. You remember that last week? He sent twelve. Ten of them come back. And those ten have a report, a bad report, a negative report. Oh, the people there are bigger than us. It's a land that eats its inhabitants. It swallows its inhabitants. We're going to be buried in that land. And all the nation of Israel listen to these. But you find Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. In Numbers 14, God rebukes the nation of Israel and he says, of all these wonders that I have done, you still, you still don't believe. I've done so much. I mean, look at your life. How many things has God done in your life that up to now, it's still hard for you to believe God? God is saying, believe. Come on, remember what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, have faith in God. He says, with God, all things are possible. You've seen all the things that I've done. And yet you still don't believe. So what does God say to Moses? All these people will die except for Caleb and Joshua. Except for Caleb and Joshua. The Bible says they had a different spirit. They had a different spirit. Oh, I would to God that today we would understand the type of spirit that we have. We have the spirit of God living on the inside of us. The spirit of God is God himself. God himself tabernacled in you. That makes you bigger than your challenge. It makes you bigger than your situation. It makes you bigger than your place. Come on, somebody. And if you can think back. How? When you were unemployed, you beg God. Sometimes, you know, you find people even make bargains with God. Oh God, if you come through for me. Oh God, I'll pay my time. Oh God, I'll be diligent. Oh God, I'll help the poor. Oh God, I'll help the church. Oh God, I'll... And it's all, it is only, oh God, oh God, oh God. You, you're basically giving God a CV of everything that you do. And God doesn't need that. He doesn't want to hear that. He doesn't want that. All He wants you is to have faith in Him. And now you have it. And yet even having, having it now, you're still not satisfied. You say, oh God, I need better. I need a better job. Oh God, I need a better salary. Oh God, I, need, I, I just need a better. I need a better house. I need a better. It is all, you, um, you're not satisfied. But when you understand that you're walking with God and you understand that God has carried you and He's brought you into the land and yes, God has shown you the vision and yes, you are on your way. It is a journey you are with. You are in transition. That's the word I want to use. You are in transition. You are in transition. It's a process to get there. But you're not out of it. You're already in it. But in the process, there's some things you're going to face. Come on, somebody. You're going to face some of your brethren that are going to dig a pit for you and throw you in the pit. But God has got Ishmaelites on their way to bail you out. God has made plan already. That even after you've been sold into a house to be a slave, God himself already makes a way. He gives you favor. 
that in spite of that, you are still in the process. Because God has shown you this. He's shown you your destiny. Hallelujah. Say amen to that. Yeah. He's shown you your destiny. He's shown it to you. He's revealed it to you. Hallelujah. And then maybe, you know, stories are fabricated about you. Listen, there will be stories. Not everybody is going to be happy with your progress. Come on, someone. Not everybody is going to be happy. Amen. You will get those that will be, you know, oh, you know, there will be stories. So praise God for the stories because you're in transition. And yes, the stories may land you in jail. But even in jail, God makes a way. He still gives you favor. He still gives you favor. And yes, you are still in transition. But you understand that God is still in control, hence you don't complain. You don't complain about your brothers that did you in and sold you. You don't complain about, come and talk to me, the stories that were fabricated in Potiphar's house. You all know what I'm talking about, right? Talking about Joseph. And then when the opportune time arrives, there is a due time on God's calendar. Come and talk to me, somebody. There's a due time on God's calendar. There's a set time. That's why the psalmist says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time. Yea, the set time to favor has arrived. Arise and shine. Thy light has come. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You know what I'm talking about here. There's an opportune time. And that time will come. You've got to just trust God. When that time arrives, you take your place from a slave to a government in a foreign land. A land where you are a foreigner, you govern. A land where you are a foreigner, you rule over that. Come and talk to me, somebody. That's, that's good. And you understand, that's what Caleb and Joshua had when they came back and said, man, we can go and we can take possession of this land because God is with us. And if God said it, that settles it. God said he's giving us the land. God said he's bringing us into the land. He said he's giving us the land. What more do you want? But you know what happens? We want to see things for ourselves. We become Thomas. We have, you have that Thomas type of faith. Unless I see it, I don't believe it. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. The blessing is in believing, not having seen. That's where the blessing is. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what comes your way. You believe God. And God. If God showed you that, it's going to come to pass. Amen. Nobody else can see it, but you can see it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. When the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities. He's not just giving you cities, he's giving you large and beautiful cities. Oh, Jesus, help somebody Amen. this morning. Listen, Johannesburg is a large and a beautiful city. Durban is a large and a beautiful city. Cape Town is a large and beautiful city. Newcastle is a large and a beautiful city. And he says here, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. It was built on your behalf. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Somebody has done all the work for you. You enter into labors you did not labor for. That is rest. Resting in God, resting in His Word, resting in His promises, resting in the fact that God has your back. Talk to me, somebody. 
to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord, the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. See, bondage. Praise God, we are no longer in bondage. Talk to me, somebody. Say amen to that. Say, I'm no longer in bondage. I'm free. The Son of God has set me free. Amen. Praise God. Watch this in Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. And verse number 9. God says, remember the former things of old. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring, I want you to highlight this. Declaring the end from when? From the beginning. See that? Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. In other words, these things that have not yet been done, that people have seen or heard of. That God has already been speaking about that He's going to do for you from times of old. Amen. And yet you think, oh, it's so difficult for God to come through for me. It's so difficult. Listen, God has done it already. Come and talk to me, somebody. Amen. Things that have not yet been done. So people tell you, hey, this has never been done. You say, well, God told me it's never been done and he's going to do it just for me. Come on, talk to me. I'm the apple of his eye. Yeah. It may not have been done for anybody else, but listen, I'm not anybody else. I'm a child of the Most High God. Talk to me, somebody. My Father is the creator of this universe and he has something creative that he wants to create for me, just for me. You see, it's important how you see yourself as God sees you. But you don't see yourself as people see you. Come talk to me. Hallelujah. If you're going to live for people's acceptance, you're going to die from their rejection. Yeah. That's the truth. God will never reject you. A broken spirit, a contrite heart, the Lord will never despise. Talk to me. Hallelujah. Saying, my, watch it, my counsel shall stand. What I said shall stand. And, 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 not only will my counsel stand, he says, and, 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 he's not yet finished, and I will do all my pleasure. Amen. I love that. He says, I, you see, not only will my counsel stand, I will do all my pleasure. Everything that I'm pleased to do for you, I'm going to do it. That's what God is saying. He declares the end from the beginning. Look at this in Genesis chapter 1. I just showed you, I shared with you just now about the grace of God, how God, He, he, he preordains it. It doesn't in advance. Genesis 1, verse 11, when God was creating the heavens and the earth. Watch what God says in Genesis 1.11. Then God said, let the earth, watch, bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, the herb that yields seed. And watch it. And what else? And what else? The what? I can't hear you. The what? Fruit tree. The fruit tree. Yeah. That yields fruit yeah. according to its kind. Yeah. Whose seed uh -huh. is in itself uh -huh. on the earth. Yeah. And it was so. You see, God, God did not create the seed so that the seed could become a tree and then the tree could bear fruit. No. He created the tree which had the fruit and had the seed within itself. He declared the end from the beginning. Are you getting this thing? He declared it 
from the color. You started with the end product. And when God calls you, God shows you. He shows you the end product. But understand this. It's already done. All you have to do is have faith in God. Keep your eye on the end. Because God declares it from the beginning. So you've got to also declare. What have you got to declare? You've got to declare the end from the beginning. Because otherwise, if you're going to consider yourself to be out of it, if you consider yourself to be far from it, you're never going to get there. You're never going to make it. Let your vision speak to you, not your challenges. Let your vision speak. He says, write down the vision. For it is for a set time, Habakkuk. It is for a set time that he who reads it may run with it. For in the end it will speak. Tell somebody, I know my end. I know my end. Hallelujah. God has already created it for you. Amen. Hallelujah. It's been created already. The thing is, you've got to see yourself as God sees you. I shared with you about the lion last week. You remember about the lion? Amen. You remember the lion? The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. Proverbs, we read Proverbs 30 and verses 29 to 30. And we found there that the Bible says a lion is the strongest amongst all beasts and it does not turn away. A lion by nature just owns whatever territory that it is in and it is by instinct. It is by instinct. A lion, a lion doesn't care, you know, about a rhinoceros. It doesn't care about an elephant. They may be bigger than it, but a lion understands that he's the king. And you know whether or not it is instinct, but all the other animals in the jungle understand that you don't mess with a lion. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. They understand you don't mess with a lion because that's a lion. A lion, you know, when a lion walks, it walks, it walks with attitude, it walks with pride. You understand? That's the spirit that you should. I, I'm not saying. This is in terms of pride being proud, no. You know, you should be proud of the fact that you are saved and that God, you know, saw you in bondage and God set you free. That you don't have to walk around now feeling sorry for yourself and looking for pity from everybody around you. But when God saw you all messed up and all dirty, God took you and God cleaned you. He dusted you and He gave you a good wash in the blood of Jesus. Come on, talk to me somebody. Not only did God do that, but God put an anointing upon you. God put His Spirit within you. That now you are blood washed and you are Holy Ghost full and you are tongue talking. You are a believer in the Most High God, that you can speak the oracles of God, that it doesn't matter, you know, when you've got nobody around you to speak to, that you can just go in the Spirit, that you can start speaking to your Heavenly Father in unknown tongues, because that's the language of the Spirit. Talk to me, somebody. You may not understand it. Your neighbor may not understand it, but God understands it. Talk to me, somebody. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Dust yourself. Shake the dust off now because God has taken you now and He has polished you and He, he listen, He's put you on the mantelpiece. Come on, He's put you on the mantelpiece because you are a product of His grace. Because when everybody else around you thought that you are good for nothing and you'll never ever amount to anything, God took you and God was working on you and all of a sudden God puts you on the mantelpiece so that, so that now, you know, everybody looks and God says, watch what my grace can do. The grace of God. The grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now where did the lion get that instinct from? It's in him. It's his nature. In the same way you and I, we've been made in the image and likeness of God. And if you're going to defeat the giants in the land, which you are going to, 
It's important that you see yourself the way God sees you. That you see yourself righteous, just as He is righteous. The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. So put on some boldness. Amen. Come on, put on some. Tell your neighbor, put on some boldness. Come on, I know you're sitting, but you can do this. Put on some boldness. Come on, shake. Put on some boldness. Righteous or bold as a lion. What does he say? The wicked flee when no one pursues. You see, people that are afraid, they're running away from things that don't exist. But the righteous, they bold as a lion. Amen. I mean, Paul even says this to the church. He says, whilst we look not at the things that are temporal, but we look at the things that are eternal, for the things that are temporal are subject to change, but the things that are eternal are not temporal. You're not looking at what you can see. You're looking at what God has shown you. Talk to me with the eyes of faith. That is what you're looking at. Amen. Man, I read this scripture, and as I was thinking about it, and God said, I'm bringing you into the land. I said, praise God, thank you, Lord. You are bringing us in. You're bringing us in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look at, you know, when David was with Goliath, it was a 24-hour thing. Oh, Jesus. You see... How long did it take God to create the trees and, you know, the, the herbs and all these things? According to Genesis 11. It was one day. One day. It took God five days to create this whole, the whole earth, the whole universe, everything, the galaxies, everything. It took him five days. It won't take him five seconds to solve your problem. Oh, it won't take him more than five seconds. I mean, when Goliath was there and he was cursing David and cursing Israel, David gets there and David says, Hey, listen, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year, but this day. In other words, what David was saying to Goliath, Listen, Goliath, before the end of 24 hours, God is going to put your head into my hand. 24 hours time. Within 24 hours, Goliath, I'll have your head and I'll have the entire Philistine nation. Oh Jesus, I need somebody here. You see that? He said, within 24 hours, within 24 hours, it'll be settled. I'll feed your carcasses to the birds of the air. Now that is a lion speaking. That is somebody speaking. Come on, somebody who knows who they are speaking. How about you saying now to that problem or that issue or that diagnosis or whatever it is you say, hey, listen, within 24 hours, I'm serving 24 hours notice. I give you notice. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Feed your carcasses to the birds of the air. So that all the nations in all places will know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. I said, Lord God, I thank you and I praise you. I bless you. I exalt you. I thank you. Everything has been done in advance. Come and talk to me, somebody. I said, Lord, thank you. Our church is waiting for us. Our building is waiting for us. You're not there. You're not there in me. I said, it's waiting. It's there. Thank you, Lord. We got our building. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have faith in this word. When I read this this morning and God started speaking to us, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's done. It's settled. It's settled. I'm not going to lease anymore, Lord. You've got the building. It's not my business how, where it comes from, how it comes. It's not my business. None of my business. You just said preach and I'm going to preach. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to preach to you so 
that you can handle those giants that are in your life. Come and talk to me. You can handle them. You can slay them. You can trample them out of foot. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you called me to feed your people so they can slay those giants. And they can take possession of what rightfully belongs to them. Talk to me. Your healing is yours. Your promotion is yours. Your job is yours. Your family is yours. Talk to me. Your spouse is yours. Your children are yours. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. He said to give you. To give you, which you did not do. It wasn't your effort. But you can see, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Not me, but the grace of God working with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your name, I'm not alone. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You have the spirit of the Lord upon you. The spirit of the Lord is within you. You see, Sister Dolly preached that word this morning about how the pagans, uh, you know, go after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need these things. Therefore, he's given them to you in advance. The people of this world are looking for you have already. Oh, you didn't hear me. What people of the world are looking for, you have already. You have already because it's been made. Come and talk to me. People of the world are trying to make it on their own. They're trying to make ends meet. But no, listen, you serve a God who stretches it. You serve a God who's more than enough. He's El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. He's more than enough. You have more than enough. Talk to me, somebody. You have the Come on, you offer a hundred for whole Shaddai. You have more than enough. Amen. Amen. It says, when you have eaten and you are full, lest you forget, beware. You see, God says, you're going to eat, you're going to get full, but don't forget. Amen. That's the problem with people. They forget. They forget they're in the land. They forget where they were and who brought them out and where they are. That's the problem. And once you forget, you become unthankful. To tell your neighbor, don't forget. Don't forget yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time to stand and take possession of the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, that rhymes. Right. That really rhymes. Right. Time to stand and take the land. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What did God promise you? What did God show you? What did God say to you? It's coming to pass. Don't consider your giant. Don't let your giant speak to you. You tell your giant about your God. See, that's what David done. He preached to Goliath about his God. Don't let your circumstances speak to you. Tell your circumstances about your God. Come on. You know, it may sound foolish to you. It may sound silly. But there's a sister that took the word that God gave. She trusted God for a, for a car. And she didn't have the license. The Lord said, man, you want the car, you won't have a license. Go get your license. I can't have you illegal on the road. So she went and she tried and she failed the first time and didn't give up. Second time she came, she said, Pastor, I said, no, listen, we're going to pray, you're going to go get your license. So she went, she got a license. 
Praise God. She got a life. Praise God. We're just trusting God for a car. God said, hey, I've made the car already for you. The car's there. But where are you going to put it? I'm not going to bless you with something that's going to stand in the sun and stand in the rain. And let the hail hit it so she built a little shelter. And then it may sound foolish to you. And then God said, start speaking to that shelter. Start speaking. Start speaking. This lady was on credit bureau, couldn't get credit. Hello. <laughs> Hello. My God is bigger than ITC. He's bigger than credit bureau. He's bigger than TransUnion. He's bigger than the banks. <laughs> we don't bank with APSA or FNB or Standard. We bank with Zion. So this lady, you know, she started speaking. The sister started speaking to this empty space. And the Lord said, go, go look for the car. She went to look for the car. And this in garage, this in still down here. God blessed her with a brand new Nissan, Tira. A brand new one, brand new. Bless you. 
your wallet. And then I speak, you know, he's saying, hey, listen, it's a long walk to freedom. And you turn it around and the, the buffalo says, they have no food, don't you? You can't buy nothing. But as time is run, it's speaking to them, saying, I have the thirst, I have the wallet of the spirit. As I give out money, money comes. As I give out money, money, money comes. I say, money come, come and talk to me, son.
and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, grace that abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' wonderful name, may the Lord cause all your plans to succeed. In Jesus' precious name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There was a scripture I wanted to share, and I'm just going to read it. It's Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 3. You know, it says, We enter into the rest. Now, the Passion Translation. I wanted to read that for you. It says, For those of us who believe, do you believe? It says, For those of us who believe, faith, faith, F A I T H, faith activates the promise. Faith activates the promise. And we experience the realm of confident rest. For he has said, I was grieved with them and made a solemn oath, they shall not enter into my rest. God's works have all been completed. God's works have all been complete, completed. Excuse me, completed. From the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. The works were completed already from the foundation of the world. Your house, job, your marriage, your spouse, your family, everything about you was completed already. So when people tell you, hey, you know, the latest um, Maserati, Maserati is a car, the latest Maserati, or the latest Rolls Royce, you know, they just made it. You don't say, hey, I need to get me one. And people say, you don't need to upgrade. You say God's already made it. Man, they're only making it now. God made it from the foundation of the world for you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to change your mentality here. I'm trying to change your mentality. You understand? I mean, even the way they build houses now, they build them differently. And people say, oh, it's so nice. And, oh. You say, hey, they're only figuring that out now, man. God already made one for me already from the foundation of the world. It's only a matter of time to God. I'm not seeking things. The Gentiles are seeking them. I'm seeking God. God knows what I need. He knows that I need that. That's why He made it. And I'm going to delight myself in Him and He gives me what? The desires of my heart. It's that simple. Why do we complicate it? Tell your neighbor, quit being too complicated. Don't complicate things. Just believe. All things are possible to him who believes. I don't know about you. I'm going to believe for me. You with me? Maybe just look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. And just say, I don't know about you. But I'm going to believe for me. So if you're not believing, don't look at me when my believing gets me there. 